today's show. The Ford F-150 Lightning debuts and surprises everyone with its price, specs and capabilities. Volkswagen AG CEO Herbert Diess says it's time to ditch hydrogen and BMW works with Pirelli to develop sustainable certified natural tyres for its X5 plug-in hybrids. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. Late on Wednesday evening, a Thursday, Kiwi time, Ford unveiled its F-150 Lightning pickup truck, the first all-electric variant of its most popular vehicle in the world. Aside from the specs, 230 to 300 miles, which is 370 to 482 kilometers of range per charge, and the ability to tow between 7 and 10,000 pounds, 3.17 to 4.5 metric tons, every F-150 Lightning will feature vehicle-to-grid connectivity, allowing customers to use their truck's massive battery packs to help keep their home running in a power cut at power levels of between 11 and 17 kilowatts. Priced from $39,900 and going all the way up to well beyond $90,000, the F-150 Lightning has already received more than 44,000 reservations in its first two days. And disclaimer, I'm one of them. Deliveries start next year. Following on from its official launch event in Europe earlier this year, the 2022 Kia EV6 had its official North American debut this week at a special event in Times Square, New York City. The EV6, built on the eGMP platform developed by Hyundai Kia, features 800 volt ultra fast rapid charging and has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack that can add up to 210 miles, 338 kilometers of range in just 18 minutes at a high power charging station. There are no price deals for the EV6 yet for North America, but the first cars to arrive, order books for which will open on June 3rd, will be limited edition EV6 first edition variants. An even higher performance EV6 with a 3.5 second sprint time, the GT, will arrive next year. In the last six years, there's been a real change of attitude at Volkswagen AG, with the company and its associated brands going through a complete reinvention that pivoted away from the dieselgate crisis and towards battery electric vehicles. For some time, hydrogen fuel cell development was also in Volkswagen AG's back pocket. But according to German newspaper Handelsblatt, group boss Dr. Herbert Dies has used a recent study from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research to call for the industry to, quote, listen to the science, stating that, quote, such fuels as a universal climate solution are a bit of a false promise, adding, they could not be expected to replace fossil fuels on a large scale. This can only be achieved with direct electrification. It's good to see Dies use science to back up his position, and I think it will make extremely hard for Volkswagen board members to vote against him. We are on the cusp of a massive expansion in electric vehicle adoption. We've seen sales figures rise in the last year while the rest of the auto industry has struggled. And with new next generation vehicles coming to market, like the Kia EV6, Hyundai Ionic 5, and just announced Ford F-150 Lightning, there really is now something for everyone. Now a study in the UK by energy regulator Ofgem shows how much of an impact all of these new models, as well as established ones like those from Tesla, are having on customer attitudes. Attitudes. In it, six and a half million households, equivalent to one quarter of all car owning families, have said they're planning to buy an electric car in the next five years. That's far better than we'd have expected, but it shows that there's still work to do before the UK meets its goal of banning new internal combustion engines vehicles by 2035. Sometimes automakers build concept cars and prototypes to tease potential models. And sometimes they let their engineers play with an existing car to develop something unofficial, but totally awesome. Nissan's Leaf pickup truck is one such example, built by engineers at Nissan's Arizona test facility in their spare time several years ago. And now we have a new car to add to the mix, the ID.X, a car that Volkswagen CEO Ralph Banstatter says was made by engineers at Volkswagen by combining an ID.3 with the 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and drivetrain from the recently announced ID.4 GTX. The result is a completely custom one-off ID.3 that can do the stoplight sprint 
in 5.3 seconds and is 200 kilos, 440 pounds lighter than a stock ID3. It is, if you'll allow me, a true hot hatch and I really want to have a play. Electric car startup Canoe has finally announced the pricing of some of its models, opening order books for customers willing to put down a $100 deposit to get in line to buy one. It's a lifestyle vehicle, the boxy, people-carrier-like daily driver will start from $34,750 and go up to just shy of $50,000 before incentives or optional equipment. The pickup and delivery vehicle variants haven't received official pricing yet, but I'd expect them to be in a similar price range. It is great to see Canoe ready for its vehicles for market, and had it managed to do this five years ago, I'd potentially see it being a big success. But with big automakers now muscling in on EVs and Tesla so very well established, I think Canoe might now have a tough time. Hot on the heels of unveiling its F-150 Lightning this week, Ford has announced its intention to work with battery supplier SK Innovation on a brand new battery production company, which will be called Blue Oval SK. At the moment, the two firms have signed a Memorandum of Understanding, usually the first step in a partnership, but something that's rarely legally binding, to build a new production facility that will manufacture up to 60 gigawatt hours of battery cells every year. The facility is expected to be up and operational by the middle of this decade, which would put Ford at a disadvantage over its rival GM, which is already underway with final production on not one, but two battery facilities with its partner and sworn SKI rival LG Energy. Ford says it will need 240 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year by 2030, so expect more battery facilities to be announced soon. General Motors' first all-electric mass-produced truck, the GMC Hummer EV, is a truck that we know has been built with performance and power first and foremost. It's also pretty expensive as trucks go, but then again, so was the original Hummer that it shares its name with. But all of that size and power comes at a cost, and this week leaked specs suggest all of that onboard power and massive battery pack means that the Hummer EV will tip the scales at more than 9,000 pounds. That's four and a half US tons or four metric tons. If true, this means that the Hummer EV will weigh more than most full-size heavy-duty pickups. The California Department of Motor Vehicles is said to be carrying out an investigation into the way Tesla advertises and sells its full self-driving option for all new cars. The LA Times this week reported that the Department of Motor Vehicles in the state is looking to determine if Tesla misleads its customers in the way its full self-driving package is sold. Tesla does include a disclaimer about full self-driving and autopilot use on its website, but the DMV is concerned that, after multiple examples of misuse, drivers aren't understanding the limitations of the technology or purposely choosing to ignore it. It says that penalties may be levied against Tesla if it's found to violate DMV advertising standards, and the Lanham Act, which governs trademarks, could be used to prove Tesla's culpability. Driving an electric car might be better when it comes to tailpipe emissions, but there are still pollution problems with EVs, from the emissions created during their construction to emissions from their lifetime in use. Obviously, you can eliminate electrical emissions using renewable energy, but microparticles from tyres are still problematic, which is why BMW and Pirelli have just announced a new tyre made of certified sustainable natural rubber and rayon, a wood-based strengthening material. It will be installed as standard on all new BMW X5, X-Drive, 45e plug-in hybrids from August and has received the FSC certified label. It's not clear if any microplastics are used in the tyres, but Pirelli has set itself a goal of achieving 60% renewable materials in all of its tyres by 2030. The day before Ford unveiled its new F-150 Lightning pickup truck, US President Joe Biden arrived at the Rouge production facility where the new truck will be made. Giving a live address on stage backed by various F-Series pickups from its years of production, the president spoke about his love for the auto industry, the importance of a strong unionized workforce and collective bargaining, his goal of using the current infrastructure bill that's being debated in Congress to help America regain its status in the world of manufacturing, and of course, making America number one in clean energy and car tech. After the speech, in which he joked about wanting to have a go in the F-150 Lightning, which presidents are not allowed normally to drive, 
He was allowed to head out on the test track with a Secret Service agent beside him. But while there are some conspiracy theories about if you actually drive or not, our contacts can confirm that yes, he did the driving and he wasn't afraid to put his foot down. And finally, in a world that is mercifully heading towards post-Covid, our attention is finally turning towards summer holidays again. But for many people, the idea of going to a hotel full of strangers is just too… a risky and scarier thought for it to be any fun. And thus, we've seen a rebirth in the idea of using vehicles, especially electric ones, as mobile campers, with camping solutions teased for Teslas, Rivians, and yes, even Aptera. But this week, Mini joined the list, teasing its latest idea, a roof-mounted tent that can accommodate two. Demonstrated on both the Mini Cooper SE Countryman All 4 plug-in hybrid and Mini Cooper SE electric vehicles, the tents come in two designs with a lightweight aluminium ladder to let you enter the tent with ease. When not in use, they fold flat into a hard shell, ensuring maximum possible efficiency. It's not exactly overlanding, but I'd give it a go. What about you? And on that note, we are done for today. Make sure you hit the notification bell right below so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, it's about time you switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and if you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you to all enjoy, but until then, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!